Hey guys, welcome back to our class. Today we're gonna to look at antivirus. And it's so befitting because we're now in a pandemic. We are all faced with the coronavirus. And so, in the same way as humans, we contract viruses, so does our computers. So in the same way we protect ourselves, we have to protect our computers. Let's get into it. So today we're gonna to look at what is a virus, um, what it does to your computer, why do people create viruses, um, how is it spread, what are some of the signs that your computer has a virus, um, what can you use to fix the virus on your computer, and how does that work. Okay, so as I said before, when we're sick, we do take medicines, medications, to make sure that we get better. So let's look at how we do that for a computer. First, we're going to look at what are virus, what are they, where they come from. How are they originated and why are they here? Okay. Now, in computers, a virus is actually a program. It's a code, it's not a physical virus. It's actually a code. But some people who think um, in a negative way tend to write these codes to cause harm to other people's computers. Because they think if they can't physically harm you, they can harm you through your computers. Now, a computer virus tries to take control of your computer once it gets there. Um, it makes copies of itself, and so it tends to affect all of the different um, files and, and, and programs on your computer. And then, when it's done with your computer, it moves on to other computers. So if your computer is connected to a network, all of the computers that your computer gets to communicate with automatically gets this virus. And every computer, that's why the corona is spreading the way it's spreading, okay? So once your computer communicates with another computer, that's how the virus is transmitted, all right? And it happens so quickly that by the time you are aware that it's happening, your computer is already taken over. It has, has already been taken over by the virus. All right, now, if this looks familiar to you, and I've been working with computers for years. This has happened to me so many times. I'm working quite fine, and then I find programs that start popping up on my computer. This is where I start to go crazy, okay? But, again, there are ways that we can prevent these things from happening. Let's look at some of those ways. Okay, so why do people create viruses? Some people actually do it for fun. There's some hackers who believe they just want to prove who is the best hacker. They just want to prove who can create a piece of code so well that it can steal something. It's, most people do it for just to prove a point, all right? And so others do it to steal information. Um, some people do it for revenge. They were fired from a company. They were working in the IT department. So they just create a virus and leave it there and that's what they do for revenge. And so, again, you're learning computer science eventually, you're going to be learning how to code. You may be in a situation where you feel as if now that you can code, you can do that, please don't. Because in the end, you get caught. It's not very nice when you get caught because it's illegal, all right? But at this point, what are some of the things that we can do to um, not spread, or how, do, how is the virus spread? Most of us use this device, a USB drive. We have so many names for it, USB drive, thumb drive. This is one of the devices that transmits viruses. And so, one of the things you may want to do is not share this device among computers. We have cloud computing now, where you can actually send stuff to people by email. There's also Bluetooth technology, but try not to share this device. All right, another way that the virus is spread, downloads of the internet. Now, I'm guilty of it. Once I know something is there for free, I'm going to go download it because it's free. But that's one of the ways that programmers hide viruses. They create programs and they say, okay, here is it. It will do this and it's for free. But within those, that program, they hide a virus. And again, once you download it to your computer system and run that program on your computer system, you are infected. 
Okay? Okay. Another way, emails. We all send and receive emails. And so, this is another way that programmers have found that they can actually hide a, a virus and get it onto other person's computers. All right? So again, these are just some of the ways. But further on, we're going to look at what do we do to prevent all of these from happening. How do you know when your computer has a virus? Yeah, these are some of the signs. It's just going on and on and on. One, your computer starts working slowly. It takes forever to load a program, okay? It freezes ever so often. It doesn't respond. That's when you know, yes, you have a virus. Or just like my laptop, when it just starts restarting itself. That's when you know it's there. And at that point, it may be a little bit too late to save all your files, but there is a way that you can actually save your computer even after the virus has gotten there. Okay? How many of you have done this? I know for sure. Even creating this presentation, I had to do this. Because again, there are viruses that are masked in different things. And I know for sure there's a virus on my computer, and that's why I don't share my USB drive with anybody else, because I don't want to share my virus, okay? Until I get my virus um, cleaned off, then I'll start sharing. So in the same way that we, when we're sick, our parents give us medic medicines and so on for us to get better, there are medicines for when your computer has a virus, good? So the, the antivirus superhero is one that's there for when your computer has been infected with a virus. Now, in the same way a virus is a code, antivirus is also a code, okay? Now, for every virus that is created, there is an antivirus that is created. So don't worry. There is an antivirus being created for corona. It's just taking a little while longer than we thought it would. All right? So whenever you, something happens to your computer and you get a message that says, would you like to, we realize that something happened, would you like to send some information to uh, the company? That is in place because it therefore means that this virus that's on, that has gotten onto your computer, quite possibly there's not an antivirus for it yet. So you help in the process of sending to them information about what happened, and then they try to create an antivirus for the virus that is infected on your computer, all right? So how does the antivirus work? What happens is when your computer, an antivirus doesn't really, it doesn't prevent a virus from going out to your computer. What it does is after it gets there, it fixes it, okay? So um, taking your vitamins and all of that to prevent um, viruses would not be known as an antivirus. But when you have the virus and you take your medicine, that is known as your antivirus. So what happens is the antivirus program, once it's on your computer, it checks all your files to see if they are okay. There is what is called a database or a dictionary of all the different viruses that are out there. And once the antivirus checks if the vi all your files are virus free, whatever virus it finds, it will send information to the company to say, okay, in the dictionary that we currently have, we do not have a code that looks like this. So you need to check, you need to create an antivirus for this specific code. And so all the time, once your computer is on and you have an antivirus program on your computer, it is automatically checking, automatically checking. If you have to plug a USB drive into your computer, then you have to tell the computer, can you please scan this for me before you open the file? And that's exactly what the antivirus does. It checks the files that are on the USB and tells you they are all virus free. You can go ahead and download them onto your computer. An antivirus program on your computer, again, also does not protect you fully from a virus. The antivirus program must be an up-to-date one because viruses are created every single day. So an antivirus has to be created every single day. 
And so automatically, once you, your computer is infected and information is sent to the company that, that owns the antivirus, they will start looking for a cure or create an antivirus program for the newest virus that you have sent information, your, co your computer has sent information about. All right, so this was what I was talking about. So this antivirus program comes with what is called a virus dictionary. The virus dictionary has in there all the known viruses so far. Now this is your computer system. Your computer system has some viruses here that are in the dictionary, but then there are a couple of them that are not in the dictionary. So what happens here is, boom, antivirus says, hey, we found a virus that is not in our dictionary. And so it sends that information to which, whichever antivirus program you have on your computer. It sends information by the internet to that company to say, hey, we have found another virus that is not in our dictionary, so we need to find a cure for this virus. And once the antivirus is, the, the, the code is created to fix that virus, it is automatically uploaded to the dictionary and all computers that have this antivirus program automatically gets updated. And so if you have an antivirus program on your computer, you turn it on one day and the computer says, um, this antivirus would like to be updated, do not stop it. What it means is that this is, they're updating the dictionary to make sure that all the viruses that are currently on your computer, they have a fix for that virus, okay? These are some examples of some antivirus programs, and these are the most well-known ones. Can you identify any of them that are there? Yep. All right, good. So how do you protect your system from virus? It's a couple of things. Make sure your antivirus program is up to date. Two, use genuine software programs. Most of us love to get the free stuff, but the free stuff may be what kills your computer. So as best as possible, pay for the genuine ones, all right? Uh, be careful with email attachments. If you receive an email, even from your mom, at the end of the day, there are hackers who can hijack a person's email. And you can know when an email comes from a legitimate person. It may say from mom, but if your mom is asking you um, to download something um, because she wants to know what your password is, if that's not something that your mother would normally do, then that's not your mom, okay? So again, be careful. Do not download anything that is sent to you that's not from someone that you trust, all right? And again, even if you trust them, there are little things that you will see, like for example, misspelling of words. That will tell you that's a virus attached somewhere there. So again, you kind of have to be cognizant. You have to think and make sure that you pay attention to who it's coming from and what it is, all right? Check all of the devices that you're plugging into your computer. It doesn't only have to be um, your, your USB drive. My computer was corrupted from my phone. I attached my phone to my computer. My phone had a virus, and that was where my virus came from. So again, you have to be careful. Even when you're at school, do not use a USB flash drive that you use at home at school, because a lot of persons use the computers at school. So be mindful of that. And finally, Stay away from illegal download sites because, again, a lot of people love to talk about the dark web and all of those things. Stay away from there. The things that are there may be, say, may be cheaper or even free, but again, that's how they get to hide viruses and get them out there. All right, thank you. Happy coding. Happy computer science. See you guys.